Hello engineers, designers, SOLIDWORKS users and others. So today in this video I'm going to show you my technique for modeling one this badass looking rim. What I saw on YouTube is that there is not a lot of uh, high quality tutorials for the rims and the purpose of this video is not to show you how to properly and uh, professionally model the rim. The purpose is to show you my technique that I use for modeling uh, rims and this technique is uh, almost, I mean, uh, in most cases used for the rims I'm doing only for the rendering, not for produ production but I think that it's a good uh, set of skills and it, it can be used for the real rims that should have that should be produced. Let me just open the image of this uh, rim we may need it uh, okay so just in case Okay, we can start. I'm just going to suppress and start from the beginning. And this is not gonna be like do this, do that. This is just showing off how I do, not showing you the sketches. Do this, do that. This is just how I do my rim. So, first sketch this is actually a, not just something like a template. So, that's why you can see this some of these dimensions here first thing I do is revolve so this is uh, actually what I always use for some of these rims because this profile is the same for some of these Vosen wheels and that's the thing I always do on the start of making the rim because it's easy, you just do a revolve of the sketch you al you already have. Next thing that comes is I have to not... Yeah, in, in all... Oh, in, in all... Oh my god, my English, sorry. In most of the cases I have to use like some uh, image that shows the rim from the front. So as you can see this image is not a blueprint, it's just a uh, photograph image where you can also see it has some perspective so I don't like do everything by the image I just need it for some of these sketching profiles so for a start what I should say let's explain uh, how this rim is actually looking like and most of today rims are looking similar not not all so what you can see here is that we have like a angled surface shape here and uh, why it's so such a big problem to do this with a loft or cutting with a draft is that you, see, you can see here it's wider and then it gets less wide in this area it's also not a simple shape and that's what I like about these Wazen rims that are, they are really uh, interesting to model and after that, that uh, same uh, shape is then becoming a straight cut as you can see and you also have straight cuttings here so let's see how I do it I hide the sketch of course and do one profile. This profile is second solid body and what I do is also hide this one because I don't need it to look at it f from the for this moment. I just use this like a main profile. So this front surfaces are going to represent this this front edges of the of the of the rim and these back surfaces are going to represent let me just show you from here so this back surface 
is gonna be a profile for this for this smaller cutting here on where it's ending and it, and it's starting to be a straight cut so how it's done I use a split line tool to project one sketch on these two surfaces so that's how it looks from the front you see I hope you can see this well and then split line 2 uh, the split line 2 is actually this contour let's see like this is this inside contour where this angled surface is finishing and like I said that second contour contour is projected to a back surface so when I was modeling this revolved prof profile I needed to to know and to define how I want it to look because of that angled surface next thing is delete face so after you delete a face from solid body it, it then becomes a surface as you can see and yeah I deleted back surface and the front one after that I needed to model that angled surface it's not really angled it's just not easy shape so here how it's looking like it's actually not perfect let me just show you but if you can if you use a 3d sketch to add just a two straight lines to make this uh, from a free surfaces you can for example do first surface that should go from here and the second one from here to here somewhere with that 3d sketch and then you could do third boundary surface that would connect this area also in a tangent or curvature relation and that that's what would make this transition here a lot better and then it could probably be even produced but for the rendering I, I do it like this and consider now that uh, when you do a boundary surface from this profile to this to this edge it doesn't actually hit this surface and that's bad so I need to add roll surface on on these two it's actually two, these two edges just to extend them uh, tangent with a tangent relation of course and then I use surface cuts a uh, surface need sorry to connect them in one so why it's why it's done it's done because if you don't do that rule surface uh, this one is not actually hitting this one here and you won't be able to trim it properly but with this rule you can so that's how it's done trim 1 and trim 2 and now when you uh, have used that rule surface to extend and you do a pattern for this this surface let me just show you this is what you get you have for example these 10 surfaces and the main one, main body and then you can just trim them perfectly and here you can see just a small gap so th this line and this small surface that gap is showing that this rolled surface was necessary otherwise you won't be able to trim what we trimmed so as you can see when you do a pattern of that uh, surface with the ruled surface you can then trim without adding more of them and yeah what you see now is actually 11 surface bodies and that mean nothing to us so I use surface knit um, to close all the gaps and uh, connect all those solid bodies into one and of course when you do that properly you can form a solid so we are back with a solid body at this moment 
and as you can see we now have two solid bodies this one and the revolve that we hide now another revolve that second revolve is serving us to make that uh, straight cutting let me show you from from this sketch so this second revolve is for this straight cut out and for this one too and it's also determinized uh, I mean it's never mind I, I'm not good with my English so I'm gonna skip what I wanted to say you will understand uh, however so that uh, revolve is containing let me just show you it has some mutual lines from this sketch that's that's first profile you see it has the same lines here just like the second profile but it that second profile is also going uh, out with this right uh, right set of lines let's say and we have another cut now this cut is as you may uh, see uh, it's a straight cut and it's done by using the sketch of that split line 2 that we actually projected on the on the back surface of the first revolve of the first re revolve profile sorry and what I forgot to say is when I do this second revolve profile it's not merged so we have three solid bodies revolve this front one and the back one uh, we have a pattern and another straight cut this time for this spoke here of course another uh, pattern and what's next the next thing is combining all bodies into one and this is most of the job done as you may see we have some fillets of course uh, for this type of rims you always have to be careful which fillet you do first but in the end it's not that hard to see and you can see here this these are the edges I also uh, rounded boss 6 strut it's uh, I guess this back cylinder here it's also necessary another fillet and this fillet yeah it's a front front fillet for all these edges at once cut strut 1 it's for this smaller hole for the mounting where the screw goes a bigger one the chamfer and of course another pattern and that's pretty much it for the mounting holes now again some of the fillets for the fillets you just have to be careful for this bigger if you are doing Vosen wheels you will always notice they are having these big fillets in the end and it's probably uh, not just a design thing it's uh, it's making these wheels stronger I would say that's that's for sure so cut extra is next this is just a hole for the la for the cap you will see the cap later cut revolve that's that's the hole for the tire again some of the fillets
and one cut I think it's uh, yeah it's this cutting here and that's that's it let me just show you something else that's the wheel done and this was I hope you learned how to model some of these hard wheels let me just show you assembly yeah this is how it looks with a uh, cap I already have it from free reviews projects and another thing let me show you this wheel this is also Vosen wheel and it's actually looking so hard to be modeled you see it's it's pretty similar in in a design that it has this front angled uh, surface but note from the side how this surface is actually looking so flexy and weird and it's looking like it's, you have to model the boundary surface very hard or something like that to achieve this look but it's actually did uh, it's actually done with the uh, same technique just like I showed you so I think this was everything for today and the end of revealing my secrets just for uh, some time. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Subscribe to my channel for more videos and see ya in some of the next tutorials. Bye bye!